Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another stock pick of the day. It is July 20th. Today we are going to take a look at Snap-on. This is out of the industrial sector. Let's jump right into the video. If you want to know more about the company, check them out at www.snapon.com. That is www.snapon.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. And Snap-on is a tool manufacturer right? history. Snap-on was founded in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 1920, and moved to Kenosha, Wisconsin in 1930. Fun fact, I was actually born in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, though I haven't been back there since I was, uh, well, I'm six to nine months old. Uh, so anyone who's from Wisconsin, shout out to you guys and drop a comment down below and let me know what city you live in. Uh, interesting facts about the company, 80,000 SKUs in our product line, 36,000 active and pending patents throughout the world. 29,000 people have visited the Snap-on Headquarters Innovation Works since its opening in 2009. Snap-on has paid consecutive quarterly cash dividends without interruption or reduction since 1939. That's actually quite a long streak there. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were increasing it that whole time, just that they've paid the dividend since then. So that's all creeping up on 100 years worth of dividend payments. Employees, 12,900 associates worldwide. Sales, net sales of $4.5 billion last year in 2022. A global reach, so a global company, obviously, they sell all over the world, serves customers in more than 130 countries, 4,725 mobile stores worldwide, more than 3,400 franchise vans in the United States. And if you've seen them, that's what I see the most is their vans driving around where they kind of show off their tools, a uh, big van with everything you can imagine in there. Really love to just have them back one up at my house in my garage, open the door and, and unload it. That's what I'd really like uh, probably a lot of you out there if you're, you're tool fanatics like myself would probably like the same. We have manufacturing warehouse distribution, R&D and office facilities throughout the world, including 13 manufacturing facilities in the United States. So pretty large brand here. Uh, again, out of the industrial sector, they do make tools. That's their bread and butter. www.snapon.com is their homepage if you're interested in knowing more about them. Now for what we're here for, we are talking about Snap-on Corp Incorporated, ticker SNA, out of the industrial sector, and they were down 7.33%, huge drop on the day, closed the day out at $272.74. Anytime again, I see a big drop like that in a company uh, like Snap-on that pays dividends, I'm going to take a look to see if we can find value there or if there is value presenting itself. 52-week range, as low as $200.75, as high as $297 and 26 cents so this one just like yesterday's omnicon is really even though a big drop on the day still closer to its 52 week high than its 52 week low average volume 289 million today's was 652,000. you pretty much see that big drop in the morning and then a steady decline pretty much the rest of the day market cap of 14.437 billion a beta of 1.12. So this one is more volatile than the overall market. That's what beta means. Beta is the market. One is the market. Anything less than one is less volatile. Anything over one, and this one is over one. So more volatile than the overall stock market. Price to earnings PE ratio of $15.66 per share. EPS earnings per share is $17.42. This is actually very high. That's a, that's a very high EPS. Very nice. This one should grow pretty fast, actually, if their EPS stayed this high. Earnings date, July 20th, uh, should be, that was today. So it may be bad earnings, right? That might be what hit them today. So might want to take a look at the news on this one, see what's going on with their earnings. Was it negative? Are they forecasting uh, bad numbers for the rest of the year? A lot of companies are uh, projecting out a potential recession. So that might be part of it. Forward dividend is $6.48 paid out on the year. They are quarterly payer. We'll see that here in a bit. And a pretty nice dividend yield of 2.2%. Obviously, if you could get them back closer to this 52-week low of $200, that would be a higher dividend yield, but currently at 2.2. X dividend date, May 18th. Looks like they just paid out uh, June 9th, so uh, last month. So you would be in line for the next dividend if you were to buy them today. And according to Yahoo Finance, they have a one-year target estimate of $258.50, which is not good because that forecast is lower than where it currently sits. So that speaks to some downside for the stock price and might not be good to buy them now if you think that that is accurate. Now I'd like to go in and look at dividend yield theory. You go under statistics, scroll down to dividends and splits. Look at their five-year average dividend yield at 2.44%. Compare it to their current 2.2 or they call it their forward annual 2.2. Same number. 
And if this number was higher, it would speak to undervaluation. But since it is lower, the, they're inversely correlated, and it is potentially overvalued according to dividend yield theory with a 2.2% dividend yield compared to the 2.44% five-year average. So again, inversely correlated. You want this number to be higher than the five-year average. The higher, the better, so long as the other metrics are, are in line with where it needs to be. This one, again, according to dividend yield theory, potentially overvalued. It does have a very low payout ratio, 34.9%, down in the 30% range, so lots of room to continue to grow this dividend over time. We'll see in a little bit how fast, if they are growing that dividend, how fast they are. And financials, under financials, you'll find a lot of information, their income statement, their balance sheet, their revenue, their debt, you know, a lot of information in there, whether they're buying back shares and free cash flow, the one that we like to look at because dividends are paid out of free cash flow and we want growing dividends. So we want growing free cash flow to cover the dividend as well. So 2019, 575 million here. And I know that's only 575,200, but it, it realistically, if you go into uh, Yahoo Finance, it, this is million. You just add three zeros to it. There, there's, they state that in there. You'd have to read and see that. But uh, free cash flow, 575 million in 2019, 2020 up to 943. Now, here's where things go a little wonky. From 2020, it dropped in 2021 to 896. Not a big drop, but then a even bigger drop from 2021 to 591 million. So declining free cash flow from 2020 to 2022. Have to really watch it. And again, you'd probably want to look at the news and see how they're doing here. If this continues to decline, that's not a good sign uh, for free cash flow. They are repurchasing their own stock, looks like uh, quite a bit here over the last several years. So that's nice to see as an owner. It means you own more of the, the company the more they repurchase the shares, whether you buy more or not. That's what that really means. Now, I always recommend more than one source. So another one that I like beyond Yahoo Finance is stockanalysis.com. And I always recommend more than one source so you can back check the information that you're getting is accurate. And according to the five stock analysts that have taken a look at this, they call it a consensus buy, but I'll be honest, this one to me is not a consensus buy. And I'll just based on the projections out there from Yahoo Finance at the 250s and, and where it sits at 272. And their low estimate here is $240, which would be a 12% decrease in the stock price. And I surely would like it better at 240 or lower, to be honest with you. I would love it to pull back closer to that 252 uh, week low there. So somewhere between 240 to 200 is where I would look at this. I would not be interested at the current price. I think it's a little elevated, a little high, and dividend yield theory would agree with me on that one. Now they have an average estimate $288.40 would be a 5.74% increase in the stock price. And if it happened to hit their high of $328, that would be a 20.26% increase. All the while you could collect that two plus uh, percent dividend yield along the way if you were to buy them now. Now, another one that I like, again, a lot of the same information, same information, actually, financials, you'll find their balance sheet, their income statement, their revenue, their debt, statistics. I like to look at return on equity and return on invested capital. You also find their margins there, uh, forecasted EPS, growth, some other numbers there, but these are some metrics that I like. So return on equity with like 10% or better, they are at 21.3%. Smash is what we look for. And their return on invested capital, like 10% or better here as well, 24.8%. So smashes both of these numbers, great return on equity, great return on invested capital. Uh, EPS looks really good. The only thing I feel is it's just a little overvalued. Again, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is this in your portfolio? Uh, do you feel it's overvalued? Are you buying it now? Are you waiting for more of a pullback? Let's take a look at the dividends. And again, payout ratio, this one says 37%. Yahoo Finance said 34%. Either you could split the difference, call it 35%. Either way, it's in the 30% range, uh, which is, again, very low. They have plenty of room to continue to grow the, the dividend, pay down debt, reinvest in the company, whatever they want to do. Plenty of room here to uh, uh, accomplish all three if that's what they wanted. And very, very nice dividend growth, 14.39%. This is a fast grower here. And with the payout ratio in the 30% range, lots of room to continue to grow. So if they continued this, this one would be a nice compounder here if you got it at the right price. So would be worth throwing on the watch list. This is one I'm interested in at the right price. You can see 2020, they were at $1.08 uh, in May. In November of 2020, they raised it up to $1.23. Wrote it through November 18th of 2021 to $1.42. $1.42 to November 18th, 2022, $1.62. So I would expect either... 
their next payout or the one after for them to raise it up again if they continue this dividend streak. And again, they've been paying for almost you know 100 years, so I would think that they're going to continue to uh, raise that dividend, at least continue to pay it out. With the 37% payout ratio, I'd like to continue to see them uh, raise that dividend over time. We're throwing on the watch list here, just a little elevated in the price, in my opinion. Like I said, back in 240 or under, I think I'd probably be interested in this. Might be worth throwing on the watch list. Let me know what you think of Snap On down in the comment section below. This is the vested interest stock screen. Go ahead and pause it at your leisure. You can go through this. This is how I set up a bit, uh, uh, the videos, as well as how I look at a business to see if I want to add it to the portfolio if it's not already in, or continue to add it if it is already a position I own. So let's go on and wrap this one up. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. For the very, very low price of $0 a day, you too can join the vested interest community. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Uh, we are building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors here so we can share our experiences, share stocks like this that we are watching that we're adding to our portfolio stocks we're avoiding altogether reasons for that tips and tricks we've learned along the way we can all learn from each other as dividend growth investors go ahead and drop your comments down below i do personally read and respond to the comments i'm always interested to read your questions and or opinions so if you have a suggestion for a stock like snap on you'd like me to cover in the stock pick of the day series go ahead and drop that down below as well and i'll try to work it into the rotation this is shane signing off wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours and remember financial security comes to those who take a Vested interest state. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion in the investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can but you should never invest any amount not comfortable losing. Always do your own research and invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice of counsel of a certified financial advisor.